Welcome to Introduction to Healthcare in Public Health in the U.S., Public Health Part 1. This is Lecture A. This component, Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S., is a survey of how healthcare and public health are organized and how services are delivered in the U.S. The learning objectives for Public Health Part 1 are to discern the main differences and similarities between public and private health. Delineate the historic timeline and achievements of public health in the U.S. Define and discuss key terminology of public health. Illustrate the general organization of public health agencies and public health data flow. Evaluate and explain the impact and value of public health. This lecture will discuss the history of public health. It is important to remember the differences between private and public health. Some of the most important differences are these Private health generally consists of clinicians and other healthcare providers. While many healthcare providers work in public health, the distinction is that public health is an agency based field rather than a clinic based field. Private health focuses on the health of the individual, whereas public health Focuses on the health of the population. The population in question may be defined variously, such as a county, a state, or even the world. Private health generally takes action after an illness or injury has occurred. Public health is perhaps more focused upon prevention, education, and monitoring. Public health resources are limited, and not every condition can receive public health attention. In order for a condition to realistically be of interest to public health, it will usually have to fit the following criteria. The condition must be severe enough in its effects to warrant the investment to mount some kind of intervention. The condition must be preventable by means of a health intervention, or at least able to be mitigated in a meaningful way. And finally, the condition must affect enough of the population, which is called prevalence. To make it worthwhile for public health to intervene, the United States was not the first country to work with public health. However, public health in the U.S. is the focus of our review. The start of public health in the U.S. is usually credited to 1798, when legislation was passed to establish a federal network of hospitals for ill or disabled merchant sailors, known as the Marine Hospital Fund. Which later became the Marine Hospital Service. The federal government deducted a portion of the sailors' wages to help underwrite this effort. Please note that public health had earlier beginnings in other parts of the world, which are not addressed here. The 19th century saw some landmark developments in U.S. public health. In 1800, the smallpox vaccination was introduced into the country. In the late 1800s, two acts were passed that brought an increasing level of federal activity into the arena of public health. The National Quarantine Act of 1878 started the transfer of quarantine functions from state to federal level to the Marine Hospital Service. In 1891, Immigration legislation was passed that assigned the medical examination of immigrants to the Marine Hospital Service. The first half of the 20th century saw considerable change and progress taking place in public health. Pneumonia and influenza were leading causes of mortality at the turn of the century. In 1906, the Pure Food and Drugs Act passed, which authorized the federal government to monitor food and drug safety. This is now the responsibility of the FDA. Also, the name of the Marine Hospital Service was changed to the Public Health Service. The Public Health Service entered the arena of workplace health and safety in 1910, triggered by the high rate of tuberculosis in the garment industry. In 1916, the first non military school of public health came into being at Johns Hopkins University. Enabled by a Rockefeller Foundation grant. In 1921, the Bureau of Indian Affairs was created. It was the predecessor of the Indian Health Service. In the 1930s, the Social Security Act and the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act both improved population health. 
and enthusiastic use of penicillin remarkably improved treatment of infections and sexually transmitted diseases. In 1946, a major event in U.S. public health occurred with the creation of the Communicable Diseases Center, predecessor of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. The CDC was initially focused primarily on mosquito control. Fighting malaria largely through the use of the pesticide DDT, the center was an outgrowth of the Wartime Malaria Control in War Areas, or MCWA. From that relatively humble beginning, the CDC has grown into one of the preeminent public health organizations in the world, with a current focus on working with states to monitor and prevent outbreaks, maintain national health statistics, and prevent and control infectious and chronic diseases, injuries, and environmental health hazards. In 1953, the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare was created. A quarter century later, the Department of Education split off, leaving the separate Department of Health and Human Services. In 1955, the Sock polio vaccine was licensed, paving the way to control of that fearsome disease. Also, the Indian Health Service was moved to the Department of Health and Human Services. In the 1960s, a number of notable public health events occurred. The International Smallpox Eradication Program was established. The first Surgeon General's report on smoking was released. A milestone of epidemiology, acts were passed to improve health for underserved groups. The Migrant Health Act provided clinics for migrant workers. The Older Americans Act created programs to help older adults meet nutritional and social needs. The Head Start program was created to prepare economically disadvantaged preschool-aged youths to enter public schooling. In 1965, the Medicare and Medicaid programs were established. This provided health care to millions of Americans. While the 1970s saw several important public health accomplishments, such as the creation of the National Health Service Corps to help provide primary care in underserved areas, passage of the National Cancer Act to strengthen national efforts against cancer, and increased management of Medicare and Medicaid, there was one outstanding accomplishment. In 1977, smallpox was eradicated from the globe, an amazing triumph of public health. There were many public health milestones in the 1980s, such as the National Organ Transplantation Act, which established a national registry for organ matching, the McKinney Act, which provided health care for the homeless, and the creation of the Agency for Healthcare Policy and Research. However, the spotlight for public health in the 1980s focused on detection of acquired immune deficiency syndrome, or AIDS. AIDS is a chronic condition caused by the human immunodeficiency virus. In 1981, AIDS was identified as a condition. In 1984, the virus was identified, and in 1985, a detection blood test was licensed. The 1990s was typified by numerous public health events. The Human Genome Project was established to study human DNA. Support for AIDS patients came from the Ryan White Comprehensive AIDS Resource Emergency, or CARE Act, Free immunizations to low-income children came via the Vaccines for Children program. Insurance was affected by the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, which established far-reaching privacy controls. And states were able to extend health insurance to many uninsured children by the creation of the State Children's Health Insurance Program, or SCHIP. The first decade of the 21st century was marked by publication of human genome sequencing by the public health response to the anthrax bioterrorism attack and creation of the Office of Public Health Emergency Preparedness. More recently, the CDC has responded to an H1N1 flu pandemic in 2009. In 2016, the World Health Organization, or WHO, declared the Zika virus a public health emergency, 
and the CDC activated its Emergency Operations Center to address Zika, a disease spread by mosquitoes that can cause serious birth defects if pregnant women are infected. In 2003, Medicare expanded coverage to include a prescription drug benefit. In 2009, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, or ERA, was enacted and included the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act, or HITECH, stimulus opportunity. HITECH included some public health-related meaningful-use objective menu options involving electronic laboratory reporting, immunizations reporting, and syndromic surveillance. This concludes Lecture A of Public Health, Part 1. In summary, the similarities and differences between public and private health were discussed. Criteria for assigning public health importance were explained. The history of public health in the U.S. was reviewed with the help of some important historical highlights, including the creation of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC.